Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gumansing in our top story. Virgin Islands transfer centennial is nearing and the Centennial Commission had several meetings today preparing volunteers and government agencies with the planning of activities such as the official parade scheduled on March 31st that will occur on all three islands. As the entire territory is celebrating Virgin Islands History Month, how has the 100-year centennial been perceived? News 2's reporter Stephanie Brown has more. The 31st of March is recognized every year as Transfer Day in the Virgin Islands, and this year the territory is observing the centennial of the transfer of the Danish West Indies to the powers of the United States. Slowly the Danish flag is lowered, a symbol of the passing power in the island. Throughout the month of March, many schools and organizations celebrated Virgin Islands History Month with cultural activities centered around the centennial theme. On September 1, 2009, the 28th Legislature of the Virgin Islands established the Centennial Commission and the Centennial Special Fund with the purpose of formulating plans and making preparations to commemorate and celebrate the 100th anniversary of the 2017 transfer. As 2017 grew near, the Virgin Islands transfer centennial became one of great debate. Firstly, in 2016, the Virgin Islands Bureau of Motor Vehicles had poorly introduced the fees of centennial license plates to residents and the $10 price increase for mandatory centennial commemorative license plates that reportedly goes to the Centennial Special Fund gave Virgin Islanders a bad impression of the legislative commemoration. Secondly, the legislation in Act 7157 of Bill Number 28-0143 also utilized the word celebrate, which many residents found offensive. You can understand some of the uh, reason behind the debate in our community whether we should be commemorating, whether we should be celebrating. Is it a solemn occasion? Is it something that is festive? And I think when we, if we'll celebrate anything, we shouldn't celebrate our colonial history. We should celebrate the people who are able to do great things despite being a colonial subject. News 2, I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown. Now, further activities are on schedule for the Virgin Islands Transfer Centennial Commemorations. The official parades are scheduled to occur on March 31st on St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. Now, here's the full schedule, the official schedule of events from the Virgin Islands Transfer Centennial Commission. The listing reflects a series of the events from March 24th to April 2nd, covering the entire territory. Kicking off on March 4th is Fort Fett at Fort Christian, the reopening, the St. Thomas location there. The events include 9 a.m. in the yard in Emancipation Garden, 2 p.m. boat parade in Sheldon Molly Harbor, 4 p.m. Rising Stars Steel Band Show, and 6 p.m. a ceremony in Emancipation Garden. Free concert immediately follows. March 26, a parade, National Park Dock, ending at the Battery Cruise Bay St. John, 2 p.m. Governor's reception at the Battery, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Then the Cruise Bay Block Party, Powell Park, that follows from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. March 29th, it's the Governor's reception at Fort Christian, St. Thomas, from 6 to 8 p.m. March 30th, Governor's Reception, Government House, Christian Set, St. Croix, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then March 31st, of course, it's the Transfer Day activities. On St. Croix, as we just mentioned, a parade begins at 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Right after that, a ceremony from 10 a.m. to 12. On St. Thomas, the parade begins at 2.30 to 3.30. Then the ceremony follows at 4 p.m. to 6. April 2nd, it's the Centennial Gala Ball. That's in St. Croix. It's a paid event at the Renaissance Carambola Beach Resort and Spa. That's from 7 to 10 p.m. Well, as the former representatives of Denmark, Prime Minister Lars Lugge Rasmussen will be uh, among the distinguished guests attending the ceremonies to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the territory of the USVI on St. Croix, St. Thomas, as well on March 31st. In an official statement, he said, the Virgin Islands, U.S. Virgin Islands, makes up an important part of the Danish history and the centennial stands for a significant milestone. He said, through my participation and my presence, I look forward to meeting the people and politicians on the islands and show them our respect for them and the history. The Prime Minister said in an official statement. Now, Governor Kenneth Mapp 
said the people of the VI will be pleased to welcome Prime Minister Luge Rasmussen, his delegation and dignitaries from around the world to take part in the ceremonies and events associated with the transfer. He said, together we must determine how, given our unique status and history, we can best set a path forward over the next 100 years. In the Prime Minister's New Year's Day address to the nation of Denmark, he made mention of this year's centennial commemoration and noted that many Danes are expected to take part in this year's events. The Danish Prime Minister will be accompanied by his wife, Solrun Rasmussen. The Virgin Islands Transfer Centennial Commission and Cardao Jewelers, you may want to make note of this, they're pleased to announce the arrival of the limited edition VI Centennial 2017 timepieces. The Centennial 20 2017 clock and watches are crafted of stainless steel and features Cardao's iconic three island map and the Virgin Islands Transfer Centennial logo in raised enamel. The limited edition timepieces are collector's items. The Centennial 2017 clock and watches are now available at the St. Thomas Cardao stores, Main Street, Crown Bay, the Sierra Lee King Airport, and the Ritz Carlton. Timepieces are also on sale on St. Croix at Perfection Jewelers. Located in Sunny Isles, timepieces can be purchased online as well at cardao.com. USVI government held some high level talks with the cruise line executives in South Florida on Sunday aimed at improving the visitor experience for cruise ship passengers following a reception hosted by the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association and the ports of the VI at the Boatyard Restaurant in Fort Lauderdale. Governor Kenneth Mapp and Commissioner of Tourism Beverly Nicholson Doty had productive discussions with FCCA Chairman and President of Royal Caribbean Cruises Adam Goldstein and FCCA President Michelle Page along with cruise executives representing Holland America and MSC Cruises. It was held to address opportunities for partnership and product development. Governor Rapp told more than 100 attendees at the reception that discussions were being planned between FCCA's leadership and the business community with the goal of strengthening the overall product and experience offered to cruise passengers. Turning to crime reports on Tuesday, March 14th at approximately 8.30 p.m., Lucius M.C. Colgan, 37, of Sapphire Village, was arrested and charged with possession with intent to distribute after he found in possession of substantial amount of green leafy substance in several Ziploc baggies. Bail for McColgan was set at $10,000 and unable to post bail. He was remanded to the Bureau of Corrections pending his advice of rights hearing. Police say Radiant Daly was arrested and charged with third-degree assault, DV. No bail was set under the domestic violence laws. Here's more. On March 13th, at approximately 1.19 a.m., the victim reported that as he was visiting his son's mother at Palms Garden, Miss Radiant Daly, who also has a child for the victim, had arrived. The victim then went downstairs to approach Miss Daly after he heard loud banging noises and observed her near his vehicle. He then fled and explained that Daly put their minor son in the parking lot of the complex, and when he went to retrieve their son, she began swinging a knife towards him. The victim concluded by stating that the knife struck him along with their minor minor son who he was holding in his arms. Investigation revealed that the victim sustained a laceration to his left eyebrow and jaw and the minor sustained a laceration to his left arm. Police say on March 12 at about 7.50 p.m. traffic division was dispatched by Vitima Emergency Call Center 911 to an auto accident located on the North Shore Road in the vicinity of Gentle Wind. The driver, Christopher Love, was traveling from north to south, lost control of his vehicle and turned over as it went over an embankment. The passenger, 68-year-old Robert Jones, was ejected out of the vehicle and died on the scene. The driver, 69-year-old Christopher Love, was placed under arrest for DUI. 2017 special election that's scheduled to occur in 23 more days and just a little update in the St. Thomas St. John District. Yesterday, elections board members met to review and prepare absentee ballots before printing them. Absentee ballots are scheduled to be mailed out to military and overseas personnel on Monday, March 20th. As of now, Kevin Rodriguez's motion for a temporary injunction of the election has not intervened with the St. Thomas St. John Board of Elections preparation in conducting the special elections to be held on April 8th. Be sure to count on two to keep you updated. On Capitol Hill, lawmakers are looking for evidence to support the president's claim that his predecessor wiretapped Trump Tower. 
Meanwhile, the president himself is looking for public support for his economic message and the Republican health care bill. Speaking to ordinary Americans, Trump is back in campaign mode, but hoping to earn votes from Republicans in Congress. His first stop was Michigan at a testing facility for self-driving cars, where he touted his economic vision. Then off to Nashville, Tennessee for a campaign-style rally where health care could be front and center. Keeping our eye on the economy, turn our attention to some local news here. Despite new branding efforts over the past two years, National Electronics chain Radio Shack filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in March and closed 200 stores with the further promise of evaluating whether to close the remaining 1,300. While the three stores on St. Thomas remain open for now, these were the signs posted at one of the locations on St. Thomas. All three St. Thomas locations have been advertising massive sales. In other news, tax beneficiary ICMC has given the pink slip to 60 employees, or roughly a third of its workforce. The company, International Capital and Management Company, LLC, is 100% owned by Richard Stevenson. It describes ICMC's activities as business consulting and management services, construction management and advisory services, investment management and more, and the operation of a corporate university known as the Center for Learning. All of its clients are outside of the territory. Alison Krivach, ICMC's Vice President of Marketing, issued a statement Monday announcing the layoffs, saying the company is in the process of aligning our organization and staffing to the changing healthcare environment impacting our clients and that they have begun the process of workforce reduction with a goal of maintaining a high standard of service. Kruvat said the company remains one of the largest employers in the territory and that while difficult, these changes are part of a longer term plan for ICMC to be a viable employer of choice in the Virgin Islands and a greater community partner. Stevenson, an investment banker, is the founder of the Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Let's take a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. We can see everything up. The Dow 112, NASDAQ 43, and uh, S&P 500 up 19. Coming up on News 2, highlights from another school celebrating Virgin Islands History Month. That's coming up next. Welcome back. Charlita Shang visited the Lou Muckle Elementary School on St. Croix today to demonstrate and explain how to tie a traditional head tie. The students watched on as Charlita tied madras cloth into beautiful headdresses. Charlita stated in her presentation that the cultural icon, Bradley Christian, taught her how to make a madras head tie design. Charlita also spoke to the students about quadrille dancing, which she also participates in. Here's more. Great lesson there. Well, just a reminder for our viewers, this Thursday, March 16th and Friday, March 17th, regularly scheduled program will be preempted on TV2 due to coverage of the NCAA men's basketball tournament. Programming will be preempted from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., then 7 p.m. to 12 a.m. News 2 will be preempted on both days, March 16th and 17th. Please note the following daytime programming that will be preempted right there on the screen as well as the times. A memory garden that was announced in October 2015 during National Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month has become a reality. The executive management and staff of the Juan F. Louis Hospital and Medical Center, they extend heartfelt thanks to Project Promises staff, its Caterpillar Project program students, student volunteers from Howard University, 
one of Louis's maintenance crew, and the community partners who on Monday worked together to put together one of Louis's perinatal loss center of Hope's Infant and Children's Memorial Garden. Local carpenter Michael Augustine built a pergola and bench for the garden, and the volunteer group stained the pergola and bench, installed stepping stones and a water fountain, and painted flowers to complete the tranquil space. Good job there. On Saturday, members of Smith Bay Action Foundation, Kappa, Rounders League, and the Civil Air Patrol with some police from Zone C Command, Lieutenant Colbert as well joined in. They did a cleanup of the baseball field and basketball court. Also, as you can see right there, the Civil Air Patrol and other visitors helped out with painting the wall with the youngsters who displayed their talented art by drawing some colorful images to brighten up the area. Office of the Governor in conjunction with the St. Thomas Water Island Administration, they are announcing the, to the residents and businesses of the lower hospital ground area that a joint task force team will be conducting a major cleanup. That's on Monday, March 20th through Thursday, March 30th. The joint task force team will consist of various departments. This major cleanup, they say, will be focusing on any abandoned properties, abandoned vehicles, roadside cleanup and debris removal, patching of roads, garbage collection, business inspections, fire safety and health related inspections. Residents are definitely encouraged to offer their support. VIPD, they recently hosted a fun day for families at Harborview Housing Community. This collaborative ongoing initiative included the Virgin Islands National Guard, Positive Guidance, the Michaels Organization, or Harborview Housing Committee, the Virgin Islands Housing Authority, and much, much more. During this full day event, the VIPD officers showcased their canine demonstration, bike safety precautions, and more. Virgin Islands National Guard, they hosted workshops on the dangers of drugs and alcohol. Police Commissioner Delroy Richards and Chief Winsbutt McFarland, they attended and greeted everyone. Children were awarded with medals and VIPD backpacks with school supplies. Commissioner Richards stated that police department's community outreach is a great way to meet the residents in our community and have the ability to impact a change and to strengthen ties with the police. St. Croix St. Patrick's Day Parade is just around the corner. Saturday, March 18th in downtown Christiansted, the 48th annual parade begins at 11 a.m. and the streets will be awash with a sea of green as parade goers, troops, cars and floats celebrate. There will be creative and colorful costumes as the ones you're seeing right there. Plenty of food and drinks as local residents and tourists fortify themselves for what promised to be another fabulous parade day and night. Something else to mark on the calendar, Beautiful Beginning Bridal Gallery. They're presenting its second annual 2017 Tiny, Little and Miss Beautiful. And that's beginning on Saturday, March 18th at the BCB Middle School Auditorium at 5 p.m. There are, and these are the lovely contestants, in the Miss category is Shaquia Williams, Sharisa Joseph. In the Little Miss competing are Sinise Forbes and Ta. Taya Lairdam. Then in the Tiny Miss, it's Najee Brianna Richardson, Kalise Henley, and Rain uh, Valentina Fleming. It will be an evening filled with fashion, intellect, and numerous door prizes with a touch of class. Interested? Definitely call 340-514-3391 for information and ticket details. There are much more options for your weekend plans to consider. MNP has more. <laughs> It's another episode When we out on the road This is what we love To celebrate, to celebrate if you like delicious menu items as much as I do, then you don't want to miss UVI Afternoon on the Green 2017. That's going to be fun. Great music by Cool Session Brass and of course, great menu items. It's all a fundraising effort for the University of the Virgin Islands. If you have that delicious masterpiece, it's not too late for you to enter. All you got to do is call this number below and your menu item may be featured at that event. For the full weekend guide experience, be sure to tune into News 2 every Thursday. Now, kicking off tonight, we're going to present to you the past weekend highlights. That's right, we're going to show you the beauty of Miss Naturalista 2017 workshop. Also, Virgin Sundays featuring the Spectrum Band at the Virgin Haven Restaurant. Stay tuned.
Be sure to check that out. Lots of events on tap. And be sure to stick around. Your, your uh, news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next. current satellite showing larger storm into the Atlantic pulling off towards the north and the east but behind it a cold front that's going to begin to stall and eventually weaken off towards the north of the Virgin Islands. So what's in charge of our weather? Well, it is that normal trade wind flow pattern bringing those brief passing showers. Not much changing. We take a look at a closer radar around the islands. We've seen a couple of showers earlier today. Really not too much going on across the leewards into the Virgin Islands. So for tonight, partly cloudy conditions. We're going to move into lighter trade wind flow as we head towards our weekend. And that means some more sunshine for us. 84 degrees for your high tomorrow into St. John as well as out towards St. Thomas. Going to be a beautiful beach day for us and not bad out on the waters either. We'll get to that in just a second. St. Croix with a high of 86 degrees and uh, mostly sunny skies. Now for your Atlantic Marine forecast, your waves four to six feet, not seeing any advisories out on the water, so you should be go or good to go for all the small craft operators out there. Winds out of your east, 10 to 15 knots. We do expect those to begin to lessen just slightly as we head into the weekend and it's pretty much the same story as you head on to the Caribbean side of things as well. Four to six feet for your waves and uh, winds out the east 10 to 15 knots. Not looking at a higher rip current risk either. So beachgoers uh, should be good to go as well. As we wrap up this weekend uh, into our extended outlook, we'll see a little bit of clouds across the area. Not too much though and through the weekend just one of those very brief passing trade wind showers going to be the story and we'll also stick with the quieter weather as we head into Monday of next week as well. So overall beautiful forecast in store for us. Get outdoors and really enjoy this nice weather. Back to you Sandy. Thank you. Time for our news to weather picture there by Leland Cotto of Ricardo Richards Elementary School and adding that little sunshine there to take us in the middle of the week down into the weekend. Leland, thank you for that. Send us your weather picture to the address on the screen and then tune in to see it right here on News 2. Stick around. News 2 Sports comes your way next. I'm Gary Anthony and this is News 2 Sports. The ninth annual football showcase is currently taking place at Charlotte Amalie High School Field from now through Saturday with players from St. Thomas and St. Croix schools participating. Greg Machik, head coach at Central Lakes College, returns to check out the VI's best. On Thursday at 4.30, players will participate in various drills and beginning at 10 a.m. on Friday and Saturday, players will participate in 7-on-7 seven -seven drills. Showcase founder Francisco Jarvis states that this is a great opportunity. Ninth annual VA High School Football Showcase. And um, this year we have Coach, uh, coach Greg Medek, the head coach at Central Lakes College, and he is here again. This is about the fifth or sixth time that uh, Coach Medek is here looking at our seniors and juniors, our top high school football players. Um, the whole reason why I started this is because back in 2008, we had a whole uh, lot of young men killing murders back in 2008. And I felt it was imperative that it's all about uh, giving our young men the opportunity to leave the island and do well, get a college education, hopefully a degree, and come back and help us out. The USVI Rugby Football Union will host a Collegiate Sevens Rugby Tournament Saturday, March 25th at UVI St. Thomas Campus. 
This will be the first event of its type for the U.S., VIRU, and the territory. So rugby is just a great sport. Uh, it's all about team building, trust, uh, fitness, um, and social activities. I mean, one of the things we're trying to do is outreach to youth programs. We put on a clinic in the Montessori School this year. Um, and our biggest goal is to eventually be recognized by the Virgin Islands Olympic Committee. The U.S. Virgin Islands Rugby Football Union tries to have a couple events annually. Uh, in the past, that's been some 15s matches. Uh, this year, we thought it would be great, uh, since sevens has gotten so popular, that we would host a collegiate sevens tournament. It highlights uh, the fact that um, we have great tourism here in the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's a sporting event that people can come out and, and see and, and be part of for the whole day. And it also gives some exposure to the younger uh, crowd. So I want high school students and I want uh, some college students at UVI to come out and see this and say, hey, the Virgin Islands can have a team that can compete in sevens rugby. So the event is uh, Saturday the 25th at the UVI soccer field. The kickoff is at 10 a.m. Our website is RugbyParadiseSmash.com. We also have a Facebook page where we're posting information about the event. But basically it's going to be five college and U23 teams from around the United States and the British Virgin Islands uh, coming to compete all day. Sevens matches are about 20 minutes long, so if somebody comes out for a couple hours, they'll get to see three or four matches. So we want to invite all Virgin Islanders to come out and check out rugby on March 25th at UVI Field. Rugby Paradise Smash is going to be a great event. We're really looking forward to hosting you. That's it for sports. Sandy, back to you. Thank you, Gary. That is all for now. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.